My patients often ask me if I don't have coverage for one of the GLP-1 medicines like Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, Zetbound, is there anything else that I can take to help me lose weight? And of course the answer is yes. That surprises a lot of people because traditionally patients have not been offered much help or assistance with losing weight. Obesity has been under-recognized as a medical condition, as something that is treatable, and most physicians and other healthcare providers do not receive very much training on how to help support people struggling with obesity. So when I am seeing somebody, we are going through all of the medical options that are available, including our GLP-1 medicines, but also including many other medications, which might be more affordable and might be very reasonable, appropriate options for people. One of the medicines that I use quite frequently for my patients is metformin. Metformin is an older diabetes medication. It is a pill that is taken once or twice daily, depending on how it's dosed. And it can be very helpful for people who have insulin resistance or pre-diabetes. We've known for a long time that people with diabetes who take metformin tend to lose a little bit of weight, but it can be much more helpful for people who have insulin resistance or pre-diabetes who are a bit earlier in the pathway. When we have insulin resistance or pre-diabetes, our pancreas is releasing more insulin than is appropriate in order to keep our blood sugars under control. That high insulin level is causing problems though. High insulin levels in your body will tend to increase your hunger level. It will tend to also increase your fat storage, meaning that the fat cells themselves often grow larger and they multiply in number, especially around important areas of the body, including that belly fat that's so stubborn, including depositing fat into the liver, the heart, and other important organs. When your body is doing this, when your body has high insulin levels, it is storing the extra energy that it can't use in the muscles in other places. From an evolutionary perspective, this was helpful. This helped people to survive at times when there was not food available, when groups of people would go through relative famines through years or seasons it is no longer helpful because so many of us have so much access to food, but insulin resistance and prediabetes are very prevalent problems. They are not something that affects every person who struggles with their weight, but they are an important part of the puzzle. Metformin can be a really helpful medicine for that when that's going on. What happens when we start metformin is that it's helping to resensitize the insulin receptors in the muscles. Therefore, they are working better and that insulin blood sugar balance will improve. When that happens, we are no longer releasing those large amounts of insulin in the body, which means that hunger levels tend to drop and our body stops storing fat in those extra areas. So we stop accumulating more belly fat. We stop having fat cells deposited in the liver, which causes inflammation things will improve. Metformin is not a strong appetite suppressant though, like some of our other medications. And so if somebody really struggles with excess hunger or with binge eating disorder, metformin by itself is not likely to be enough of a support to be helpful. However, I have many, many patients who feel like they're trying to do things well. They feel more hungry than they would like to be, but they feel like they're eating healthily. They feel like they're exercising regularly and they can't really explain their weight loss or weight gain rather. When we do some digging, when we order fasting insulin and blood sugar levels, when we look at the average blood sugar test, which is the hemoglobin A1C, we can often identify a pattern of insulin resistance or prediabetes. And when that is the case, metformin can be really helpful. Now, one thing I see with metformin when a lot of prescribers are using it is that they will go with low doses only, and that is not likely to be helpful when we are trying to treat weight related to insulin resistance and prediabetes. When I'm starting this medication for people, I will typically start with a very low dose, 250 milligrams once daily, 
and gradually increase that dose by 250 milligrams per week until we are taking 500 milligrams twice daily. After that, I check in with people and I ask them, how do you feel? Some people will tell me that at that dose, they feel less hungry. They feel like it's easier to stop eating sooner in the meal. They feel like it's really helping. It's about 30% of my patients with insulin resistance or prediabetes who notice that they feel really well at that dose. That means though, that about 70% of people at that dose aren't really noticing any effect. For those people, I am generally going to be increasing the dose of their metformin slowly again up to 1000 milligrams twice daily. Now this is for healthy people who don't have diabetes, who don't have kidney disease, but have some insulin resistance or prediabetes plus or minus some weight gain. This dose, 1000 milligrams twice daily, is typically very helpful for helping to reduce those excess hunger levels and help the things that you are doing to work better. It is not approved as a weight loss medication, but your insurance typically does not worry about prescribing this cheap medicine. That is, insurance does not require prior authorization. They are not concerned if you have diabetes in terms of covering this medicine because it is cheap, easy, and relatively safe. Now, there are a few people who shouldn't take metformin. People who use excess alcohol and are prone to blackouts, that's an unusual circumstance, but those people may not be safe to use metformin because it can rarely cause some acid-base balance problems. Similarly, people with advanced kidney disease are usually those who would be very cautious with using this medication with because it can uh, rarely cause an acid-base blood problem. That's not typically a problem for most of my patients, but it is something to be aware of. Another thing to consider is that when we are using metformin, it is important to take either a multivitamin that contains vitamin B12 or to take a B12 supplement. When we take metformin for many years, it can lower your B12 levels over time. And so we want to make sure that we are getting an adequate B12 intake. An interesting effect that I have seen sometimes with my younger, healthier patients who have insulin resistance or prediabetes and have some weight that we are trying to correct is that sometimes metformin will also reduce heart rates and therefore it can also reduce exercise tolerance, especially for people who are highly athletic. Now, this is not a problem that most of my patients encounter and in older patients, especially those who have diabetes, Metformin has been shown to be relatively protective against certain heart rhythm problems, including atrial fibrillation. That is, people who have, di uh, sorry, have type 2 diabetes um, are at lower risk for certain kinds of heart issues when they take metformin because it has some mild heart slowing effects. Now, in a young, healthy, active person, very, very occasionally, someone finds that their heart rate drops low and they don't feel well because of that. I've seen that happen on a few occasions where somebody who is an intense runner and doesn't feel like they can push through uh, with metformin. If that's the case, then that might not be a good choice for you, but this is rarely a problem for most of my patients. And many of my patients find this to be a very helpful approach for helping to overcome insulin resistance, for helping nutrition and activity levels to be more successful when they have insulin resistance or prediabetes. Again, let's think of medication options that are easy to get, easy to take. It is important to slowly increase the dose, otherwise this can cause a lot of gas or bloating for people. But when we slowly increase the dose and we check in, very frequently people tolerate this medicine very well and people are able to use it successfully to help with weight loss. When you look at studies, metformin typically can produce weight loss ranges of 2 to 7% in studies. However, for people who are generally eating a healthy, well-balanced diet without you know, too much excess calories or junk, people who are regularly physically active and find themselves either unable to lose weight or gaining weight with that insulin resistance and prediabetes pathway, this medicine can be a real game changer and it can successfully produce weight loss. I've seen in the neighborhood of 30 to 50 pounds in people who have been consistently 
healthy with their lifestyle and adding metformin in is the piece that helps them overcome the insulin resistance and prediabetes that was making it more difficult to lose the weight. Um, this is something that you can speak with your physician about. You can refer them to this video if they want to learn more about using metformin to help with insulin resistance, prediabetes, and weight loss. And I hope that you find this video helpful. Thank you.